November 17, 2010, mm. here in the National Voting Museum Rights. Lady Freedom. Howdy. And <laughs> with my new friend. Sister Yomi. Sister yes. Yomi, please. Mm -hmm. Yomi, why Yomi? Yomi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? What does why? that mean? Well, Yomi by itself is, doesn't really have a meaning. My name is Abayomi. 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 Okay. Abayomi, when it stands alone, means the bearer of joy. My entire first name, this is my first name, Abayomi Olu Oni Eje. This one could not be stopped. This one was sent by God. So we welcome the friend who has come to bring joy into the house. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yoruba tradition. My father is first generation Nigerian, Yoruba. My mother's a Savannah Southerner, so I'm a real African American. <laughs> I got one parent African and one parent Black American. Proud African American. Proud. Very proud. Very, very proud. Of all my people. <laughs> good. Yeah. And I see you wearing there, Sister Angela D. Yeah, Sister Angela is Can a you? good friend and um, constant inspiration like her and Sister Sada and all those other sisters that stood and fought for freedom and for the rights of our people, which is the reason I accepted this wonderful job in Historic Summer, Alabama, because there's so much history. There's so many of our people who marched, who sang, who died for us, and they didn't even know our names. They didn't even know us. And they did it, effortlessly, because they knew it was the right thing to do. At so I time. must continue to stand to do the work because it's the right thing to do. And for the future, for our generations, our children. Hmm. So important. For the, for the ones still unborn. For those that are still unborn, for those that are here now who are so miseducated, you know, that are so lost. Yeah, it's important. There's a lot of flock out there, and we just gotta pull them in, pull them in. And it'll be through education, through art, through our, our institutions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, where do you live? I live in here now in Selma. Um, I came here from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, prior to then, I was uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I'm from New York City, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So I've been around. Been around. I've been around. Have you been to Africa? I have been to Africa. I have family and home in Africa, in Senegal, West Africa. And um, I've traveled throughout West Africa in particular extensively, studying with artists and um, just mastering my craft as an artist. I'm a performing visual and literary artist myself. So I do African music and dance and storytelling and living history interpretations, visual art. Yeah. Wow. That's inspiring. Yeah, yeah. That's Africa is inspiring. And everybody of African descent, at least one time in their lives, before transitioning home, has to go to Africa and see it for yourself. Before transitioning yes, home. Yes, home to the Creator. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's so powerful. Yeah. Beautiful how you said it. Thank you. Before transitioning, transitioning. home. Yeah. That's what I always tell the people when the, we always say, uh, I'm going to see you later. And I say, well... If I don't see you later, as the old spiritual Negro says, I see you at home. At home, that's right. That's, that's right. a promised land. The promised land. <laughs> I have home. Absolutely. That's good. Well, you want to tell the message for people of the world, children, elderly, middle age, that will be able to uh, be delighted by this video mm -hmm. that we're doing in the heart of the civil rights movement in yes. Selma, Alabama. Yeah. Some words, please. Um. I think my words of encouragement are first and foremost is to honor thyself. And in honoring thyself, you honor God, you honor your creator. That means standing in truth. That means trying to walk in the light. Um, so being true to oneself. You, like I said, is the highest form of respect to God. When you see injustices, regardless if they're black people, white people, Latin people, whoever, when you see an injustice, you have to speak up, stand up. If you're not strong enough to speak out, then maybe you can empower yourself with the pen, write it. 
you know, write it to a congressman, to a president, write it in a poem, however, so that the word is out, so that the people will know. That's the only way to knock down and champion over these um, walls of resistance to change. And, 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 you know, that's a funny thing for me because everything must change. Somebody put in a song years ago, everything must change, but the hardest thing for man to accept is change. These people that you see in this great hall of fame, the foot soldiers, and the people that you see throughout our museum, they knew it was the right thing, that everyone should have an equal voice and equal vote. So they fought for us, they stood for us, they marched for us, they lost their blood on this, on this bridge, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, during Bloody Sunday. They lost their blood, uh, their dignity, their uh, sweat and their tears in so many marches across our country for us. And yet we won't go out and vote. We feel like, well, who are we going to vote for? They're crooked on the left and crooked on the right. And they may be. They're right in the independent. You understand? You got to do it because of what they did for us. It's our obligation. It's our obligation. So it's that that keeps me motivated. It's that that keeps me going. And those are the words that I would like to impart to those around the world that may happen to see this. Is that we have to stand. And that we have to continue these traditions. And in, doing, in honoring our ancestors and the work that they did. In celebrating our living legends. Those that are still alive. Who went through these various movements. In honoring them will gain strength. When you feel like you have fear in your heart to move forward, look back into your past and look at all the people that did what they did and draw off of their strength. And that strength will empower you to move forward. In the African tradition, we call that Sankofa. 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 Sankofa means to look back into your past so that you can be empowered and strengthened so that you can move forward. We say a people that don't know their history cannot clearly move forward into their future. You see, we'll make the same mistakes. We'll run up against the same walls. So you got to know your history. Amen. Amen. Ali Primera said, no matter if you're white, no matter if you're black, no matter if you're Indian, he said, even though I don't have my hair thin, I am a Piarua, an Indian. Even though I don't have my nose flat, mm -hmm. I am from Barlovin, uh -huh. where the African Venezuelans were. Mm -hmm. And he also said in terms of brothers and sisters, the brotherhood is not exclusive from the umbilical affinity. Umbilical affinity. We could be brothers and sisters from the same mom. But sometimes we are more brothers or sisters to a stranger that is not our family directly related. It's a powerful message. And I appreciate being here with well, you. you. It's we a blessing for me came. to bring this word of yours from the Mother Earth of Africa, yes. from the land of Lamlumumba. Lumumba, yes. From those great people of yes. that Mother Earth. Mother from the from the from the from the embryo mm -hmm. from the womb of the earth. And here you are, one of those branches. <laughs> smiling to the word and saying, yes, yes, we can. We can. And yes, we will. Amen. Amen. My brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> that was